It's not really a secret to say that GPUs are extremely overpriced today, to the point that people are buying very old GPUs, like the one I have in, the, in my hand right now. This is a GeForce 760 GTX. This uses the Kepler chipset, which was the last one that Mac OS supported, and it's supported all the way up into Big Sur. So I kind of wondered, what happens if I stick this very underpowered 2 gigabyte of VRAM having GPU in a 2019 Mac Pro? So let's find out. You are now swaying to the sweet sounds of DMUG, the definitive Mac upgrade guide. I'm feeling pretty good, so let's just get into this video. The GeForce 760 GTX was released in 2013 and I believe I bought this particular unit in early 2014. It's lived its entire life in a Mac Pro 3.1. For a quick history, Apple used to use Nvidia GPUs in its Macs and now they don't. I made a video on this topic if you want to watch. As I previously mentioned, the last Macs to use the NVIDIA GPUs had the Kepler chipset, which is the same one found on this GPU. This meant Apple was on the hook for supporting them. Apple's never one to pass up a chance to obsolete some computer hardware, so macOS Big Sur is the last macOS that supports Kepler GPUs. And I'm ready to upgrade my Mac Pro 2019 to Monterey, so this is my chance to try this experiment. Installing GPUs are pretty straightforward, just plug in power cables and you're good. This is where I was a bit of a dum-dum and didn't do my due diligence because the Mac Pro 2019, just like its classic Mac Pro little brother, uses the same mini PCIe to PCIe power ports. It does have a single 6-pin power port, so I was able to use the cables that I used for my 2008 Mac Pro in the 2019. To be honest, I didn't see that coming. This GPU is kind of a problem because it's really weak. I have dual 4K displays, and this guy will output 4K, but I'm not expecting good results. I decided to start with my BenQ PD3220U, and it just didn't go well at all. I got a boot screen, but it was smooshed. Then the login screen wouldn't respond. I tried wired keyboards, and they didn't work. This is when I started to really doubt this experiment. So then I decided to try my Sony XH100H TV. I then decided to plug in my BenQ into the RX 5080. My hope was maybe I could log in and then troubleshoot the G4 760. This actually turned out to be weird because the boot screen started on the RX 580, but as soon as it got later in the boot sequence, the RX 580 just stopped outputting video. But I was able to log in and things went really badly. It was a complete and utter slideshow. Almost unusable, but the mouse still tracked pretty decently. Going through the system preferences, I could see indeed that the G4 760 showed up properly. I then got the wise idea that I would use QuickTime Pro and try and capture the screen. This didn't work out and caused my Mac Pro to reboot. I figured it was time to break out the secret weapon, which was my old 1440p display. It's an absolute piece of junk. It has placebo buttons, which I assume are there to control the non-existent speakers, which is fitting for the non-existent company. I actually don't know if blue or red is the correct setting. Who knows? This thing was a LG panel that was the same one found in the 27 inch IMAX in 2012, but in the worst possible case. It cost me $300 in 2012, and I used it for eight years. Unfortunately, the Shimian did not work. I tried it several times, and I just couldn't get video out of it. I put my Mac Pro 2019 back together, yanking the 760, then realized, oh shit, I really should have tried this without the RX 580. Not that this video was super high quality to begin with, but I apologize in advance as the next part's going to be a lot of iPhone handheld footage. I wanted to move quickly and I was afraid it wasn't going to work. So to remove the MPX slot, I'm pretty sure I have to knock these guys out too as well. This is my first time ever yanking this module out. Now this is kind of absurd because there are so many of these screws. There's four for this entire PCIe chamber. So I just realized something. 
there's a number one for this guy, and then there was a number three on this guy, and then you have your latch right here, so somewhere number two step is in here. What am I missing? Oh, there's number two. That's the lock. Oh, God. Maybe I should have done that one second. Okay, this is pretty cool. So here's our number two right here, and it switches, and the whole unit goes up and down. And that's for the PCIe hangers that connect to the little chip guy right there. So that guy to there. This is kind of a pain. There's not really a good way to do this. I might have to put down my phone. And let's try and see if we can get this to work one last time. The responsiveness for this should be a little better. Now this is actually really usable. QuickTime's actually dropping frames so it doesn't quite show how smooth it is. But you could actually use this graphics card in this computer. Downside at 4K, it's only running at 30 hertz. Now if there's one place where this will work, it will be Windows as Microsoft absolutely is amazing at long tail support. You are lucky if you can launch an app from seven years ago under Mac OS. You are unlucky if you can't launch an app from 17 years ago on Windows. You can even launch some Windows 95 apps, which is 27 years ago. Now let's try Windows. Now I just realized I don't have drivers for this GPU installed in Windows and it's updating. So who knows what it's gonna do right now. So if I took the time to install the drivers with this, it would probably, what the hell? Well, it would, oh, it's back again. Oh, it just did install the drivers. I see what's happening. Now, okay, so what just happened behind me on the screen is it flashed off and now it's running at 1080p or I mean 4K and before it was running at 1080p or something like 720p. Since this is a, a TV, it can run multiple resolutions and scale as accordingly. If I took more time, I'm sure I could play games on Windows 10, but that's not really that exciting. I just mostly wanted to see if this GPU would work in this computer, and I'm going to declare the success. I was able to launch Mac OS and Windows 10, and it's doing things behind me as I speak. This really looks like it's running at 60 hertz, so let's see if I can figure this out. I'm not a Windows guy most of the time, but oh, okay. Change resolution? Oh, 59 hertz? That's pretty close to 60. Wow, all right. Way to go, Windows. 59, let's see if we can do 60 hertz. Click this little guy here. And we have victory. For the most part, Windows configured itself. You saw while I was talking in front of the camera. Now I just discovered this can do 60 hertz in Windows, which leads me to believe if I were to install Switch Res X on another Mac OS, that I could probably force 60 hertz out of this in 4K. This means this GPU is viable to drive at least a single display with 4K. Normally I start out my videos with a beer, but this one I'm gonna go with one in closing. This is the New Year Suve from Freem. This is the 2020 version, and I think I'm gonna enjoy this. I hope you enjoyed this video.